This is a true crime in real time update from True Crime Today and the Hidden Killers podcast. I'm Tony Bruschi, and today we delve into a shocking new allegation against Sean Diddy Combs that has sent ripples through the entertainment industry. Just yesterday, a lawsuit was filed in the Supreme Court of New York claiming that Diddy sexually assaulted a 10-year-old aspiring rapper in 2005. This accusation isn't just another headline. It's part of a troubling pattern that continues to unravel around the music mogul, drawing fresh scrutiny to his past. The lawsuit, brought forth by an attorney named Tony Busby, identifies the plaintiff as John Doe, a boy who at the time was full of dreams and ambition. In 2005, his parents, eager to help him break into the industry, traveled from Los Angeles to New York, seeking to connect with influential figures in music. They hired a consultant who promised a crucial meeting with Diddy, believing it could launch their son's career. What began as a hopeful audition, however, quickly spiraled into a nightmare. During this meeting, John Doe was allegedly invited to Diddy's hotel room for a private audition. After performing a few songs, Diddy reportedly told the boy that he could make him a star. But things took a dark turn when the consultant allegedly left the young boy alone with Diddy. Moments later, another individual offered John a soda, which he drank. Leading to a sensation he described as feeling a little funny. The lawsuit suggests that the drink might have been laced with drugs such as GHB or ecstasy. Once under the influence, the lawsuit claims Diddy coerced the boy into sexual acts, instructing him to move closer and then pushing him down. In a terrifying twist, Diddy allegedly said, you have to do some stuff you don't want to do sometimes. The gravity of these words only deepened when the young boy reportedly lost consciousness during the assault. When he came to, he found himself in distress with his clothing in disarray and signs that he had been sexually assaulted. The lawsuit also details a chilling threat made by Diddy, allegedly warning the boy that if he spoke out, there would be dire consequences for his family. This profound intimidation is indicative of the pervasive power dynamics that often plague young, aspiring artists in the industry, raising urgent questions about the protections, or lack thereof, afforded to vulnerable individuals. In response to the lawsuit, Diddy's legal representatives vehemently denied the allegations, labeling them as facially ridiculous and suggesting that the lawyer behind the claims is more interested in media attention than the truth. They expressed confidence in their ability to prove that Diddy has never engaged in such misconduct. This lawsuit is not an isolated incident. It marks the latest in a series of allegations against Diddy. Attorney Tony Busby has publicly stated intentions to file up to 120 lawsuits against the music mogul, suggesting that many more victims may be ready to come forward. Compounding this situation, Diddy is currently facing separate charges related to sex trafficking and racketeering. With a trial date set for May 2025, as the story unfolds, the implications of these allegations are staggering. What does it say about the systemic issues within the entertainment industry, and how do such powerful figures exploit their status? As we delve deeper into the allegations against Sean Diddy Combs, It's crucial to understand the broader context surrounding these events. Diddy, a prominent figure in the music industry, has long been celebrated for his contributions to hip-hop and pop culture. However, beneath the glitz and glamour lies a history marked by controversy and troubling behavior that raises critical questions about power dynamics in the entertainment world. Diddy's rise to fame began in the early 1990s when he founded Bad Boy Records, which launched the careers of numerous artists, including the notorious B.I.G. His ability to craft chart-topping hits and foster talent quickly established him as a mogul in the industry. Yet, with that success came allegations of inappropriate behavior and abuse of power. Reports of sexual misconduct involving underage individuals began surfacing years ago, casting a shadow over his legacy. In this most recent lawsuit, the plaintiff's story echoes similar narratives of vulnerability faced by young artists attempting to navigate a cutthroat industry. The psychological theory of exploitation becomes relevant here. Young talent often finds themselves in compromising positions driven by dreams of fame and success. The desire to impress powerful figures can lead them to tolerate behavior that crosses ethical boundaries. 
A significant element to consider is the systemic imbalance of power within the music industry. Artists, particularly minors, may feel pressured to comply with demands from influential figures, fearing that refusal could jeopardize their careers. This dynamic can create an environment where abuse can thrive, as the risk of retaliation, both personally and professionally, can be overwhelmingly intimidating. Furthermore, the recent surge in lawsuits against Diddy suggests a growing willingness among survivors to speak out against their abusers. This movement, albeit gradual, reflects a shift in societal attitudes toward accountability for powerful individuals. It aligns with broader conversations about the Welsh Me Too movement, where voices long silenced are finally being heard. As the allegations against Diddy continue to mount, they reveal more than just personal misconduct. They shine a light on the darker aspects of the entertainment industry, where fame and fortune often mask troubling behaviors. The legal battles that lie ahead may not only determine Diddy's future, but could also prompt a reevaluation of how the industry protects its most vulnerable members. In light of these revelations, we are left to ponder what will it take for the entertainment industry to implement significant changes that prioritize the safety and well-being of all artists. The stories of those coming forward serve as a stark reminder of the urgency for reform. I'm Tony Bruschi. If you want to stay up to date on this case and others we cover, be sure to subscribe. In a world where the darkest secrets lie just beneath the surface. Well, they said it was an accident, but the evidence says otherwise. Where hidden killers roam unnoticed in the shadows. Well, I think you would definitely be looking at a, a blend of toxic, very bad narcissistic personality traits, and they will be vengeful and possibly resort to violence. Join Tony Bruschi as he uncovers the truth behind the most chilling cases. <laughs> they said it was an accident, but the evidence clearly says otherwise. Each episode, we dig deep into the minds of those who commit the unthinkable. To your point of narcissism, he thinks in his own mind how witty he is, yeah. but he lost that jury. I, I was I was done with him in two minutes. From unsolved mysteries to infamous crimes. Geez, you've just talked about how you've taught yourself how to do everything under the sun. I bet you did a YouTube video, how to best kill somebody with a knife. Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi takes you where few dare to go. How does someone with such a dark secret go unnoticed? For so long. With multiple new episodes every single day. We're not just telling stories, we're seeking justice. Listen now on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts. Just search for Hidden Killers with Tony Bruschi.